is built on nothing else than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Good morning, my brethren. God bless you. <coughs> Hope is covered and his blood support me in thy wealthy flood when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and shield on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Where he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found. Rest in his righteousness alone. For less to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. All other ground is sinking sand. Good morning, my brethren. God bless you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for honoring the invite. It's a beautiful Saturday morning here in my local environment. We thank God for the miracle of sleeping and waking. And we thank you for your own lives too, for honoring God's invite. And uh, like I always say, and I repeat it again, you have honored God. God will honor you back in Jesus' name. It's 11.47 a.m. GMT, my local time here. We are grateful the year is winding up to an end gradually. In about five weeks or thereabout from now, the year will come to an end. We thank you for how God has sustained us since the beginning of January up till now. We are extremely grateful. Can we pray and go into the word of the Lord shortly after? Our Father and our God, we bless your holy name. There is none like you. There will never be any like you. We thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for divine health. We thank you for journey mercies. Each time we go out, we go out safely and return safely. We thank you for the meetings since the beginning of the week since the beginning of the month, since the beginning of the year. Father, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Once again, I commit this day's meeting this morning into your hands, O God. Take it over from me. Take it over from your people. Let there be receptive hearts for your words this morning and that their lives will bear outwards fruitfulness of the effect of your words that they are hearing this morning in their lives in Jesus' name. We soak this meeting in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you once again. I appreciate you. I don't take anybody for granted. Everyone that comes on board with me into the presence of the Most High God, I appreciate them all. So you are welcome, my brother. God bless you. The topic we are speaking this morning is knowing Him. Him means God. It reveals your weakness. Knowing God reveals your weakness. <laughs> if that means the opposite of that is that if you don't know him, you will still be thinking so highly of yourself. <laughs> That's the opposite. <laughs> Oh, isn't that uh, wonderful? Knowing him knows, reveals how weak you are, how frail you are, how small you are, how more or less you are nothing beside him. Because you know him. If you don't know him, you will be thinking in your thoughts and minds and your small knowledge, or if you want to put it that way, your so-called big knowledge, that you are so big, you are so powerful, you are invisible, nothing can happen to you, you are, you are just there for life, <laughs> forever. <laughs> and, ex and even going to the extent about boasting about your strength, your ability, your powers, so, when you see people boasting about themselves, anywhere you are in the world, anywhere, any place, anywhere in the world, it's a confirmation that they don't know the God they are serving. Especially if they profess to be Christians. The ones that are not Christians don't even know him anyway. The ones that are not Christians, they don't know him. Hallelujah. The ones that are Christians are the ones that have access to the Bible. And they read the Bible regularly. Through the knowledge of what they are reading in the Bible, their, their eyes of understanding are revealed about certain things about him. Then they begin to know him. Those who don't read the Bible cannot have access to his knowledge. <laughs> I'm sure you know that. Let me give you an example. If you belong to an association, you know, they always have uh, doctrines by which they go by. They say they have, a, what do you call it, an article of association they have drawn up by which every member must abide by. If you belong to an association, everybody has what you call the, the resolution or, or, or doctrines they have printed out and say, these are the rules and regulations all members of this association must abide by. So you get the, the doctrinal document, the paper, and uh, you read it so you can abide by the rules and regulations, by the benefits and the demerits of being a member. Likewise, the Bible. God has also created the Bible for those who belong to him to read the Bible, to read his words, his minds, his thinking, even about yourself, about your today, about your tomorrow. Everything is enshrined in the Bible. About your family, about your job, about your business, about your future, about your tomorrow, about your finishing well, about your deadness destiny, purpose and dreams, everything is written in the Bible. That's why I always tell you people, my friends, download the software of the Bible and begin to read. Just like those in various associations read the doctrinal uh, document of the association and they begin to go through it so that they can function very well in that association. I'm sure you also know that all manufacturers of Products, 
whether vehicles, whether home appliances, even the phone you are using, or the tab, or the laptop you are, you are all interfacing and communicating with this morning. They all come with, man with manuals. Manuals by which it will guide you to experience a flawless, smooth operation with that device, whether a laptop, a tab, or phone. So the manual comes. If you, have a, you want to know about a particular thing about that device, you go to the manual. I want to know how it functions. I want to know how to correct this. I want to know. You go to the manual and begin to read. You don't, know, you don't need the manufacturer anymore. He has finished his job. He has given you a manual. Take the manual. Anything you want to find out, open the manual and read. If your car develops a problem, you go to the manual of the car. Where do you think the problem is? Oh, the car is not starting. Let me go to where the car is not starting. You go to that particular page in the manual of the car and you go through it. Oh, this is what I should do. This is what I should do. You check this, you check this, you check that. It gives you knowledge. And you are able to solve the problem. So, the same thing with Christians who belong to God. They have a manual. And their manual is the Bible. So if you are not accustomed to the manual, which is the Bible, I can tell you with 99% surety that this God you profess to be belong to or to be serving, you don't know him. I can tell you straight away. If you are not really familiar with the Bible, if you don't read it, if you don't know what it, it, is, it contains, then you don't know God. And you are not likely to know him until you begin to read his manual, until you begin to read the Bible, just like you are not going to get the maximum efficiency of your device until you go through the manual of the device, go through the manual of the car, go through the manual of the appliances, go through the manual of whatever it is. Then you know how to navigate through the various naughty challenges that will come up tomorrow concerning that device, concerning that appliance, concerning that vehicle. If you are, if ordinary vehicle, ordinary appliance, ordinary uh, device comes with manual, you think God will not provide a manual for the human beings, human race? He has provided manual. And the only manual that belongs to every human being across the globe is the Bible. <laughs> Any other book, I'm sorry to say, should be thrown in the trash. Every other book should be thrown in the trash bin <laughs> because they will create confusion for you. I'm not saying you shouldn't read other books, but any other books that cause itself the association to God that wants to replace the Bible, throw them away. But it still doesn't mean you don't you shouldn't go to the bookshop and buy good books that will enlighten your knowledge more about God. No, please, don't get me wrong. I'm talking of other religious books now that say they want to compete with Christianity. That's the ones I'm telling you should throw in the trash bin. But go to the bookstore, read about how to know God more, how to relate with this, how to do this, and just go to there and pick up something of interest to you. Go and buy and read. It will also enhance your knowledge with the Bible. So if you are not accustomed to reading his word through the Bible, and like I said, and I'm repeating it again, you are not likely to know him. <laughs> And you are most, most likely going to be dependent more on your ability. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can do this by myself. I can travel to any country I want. I can do whatever I like. I can divorce my husband. I can divorce my wife. I can change this job. I can change from this neighborhood to another neighborhood. I can go and buy this because you have resources. Because you have the means. I always tell people, Having resources, being blessed by God to have resources, to have power, to have influence, does not mean you should jettison God. 
As a matter of fact, having all those things should draw you closer to God. Because he's the enabler of all those things. So when we use a topic like we, like I read to you earlier on that, knowing God reveals your weaknesses, <laughs> your shortcomings <laughs> as a human being. What does that tell you? It tells you that everything about your life should be handed over to God to take charge of. The one that is higher, stronger, better, more powerful, who is the source of everything about you, you should hand over your life to him. And let him take over your weaknesses. Let him take over your shortcomings. Let him take over those challenges. Let him take over those situations and circles. You should hand them over to him. Knowing God reveals those weaknesses. Not knowing him reveals that you, are, you think you are more than who you are. Have you not seen people boasting? Is it me you are insulting? I'm going to deal with you. You don't know who you are talking to. <laughs> uh, somebody might even say, I'm the boss. I have the power to do this against you. I have power to do that to you. I'm your landlord. I can, I can evict you from this house. I can do this for you. Let me tell you straight away. If you're a Christian, if you know God, anybody that is boasting around you is a sign of their weakness. It's a sign that they're absolutely nothing. If you're a Christian and you know God, you know that he's boasting of his power and that power is boasting of because of the God you know who is your backer and your supporter, that power is boasting of we put him to shame concerning you. Hallelujah. Maybe I didn't, you didn't get what I said. I, should, I will repeat it again. Somebody is threatening you. Maybe your boss, or your landlord, or your neighborhood this, or neighborhood that. They are threatening you illegally. You have not done anything wrong. Maybe because of one thing or the other, envy or something. They just or dislike you for who you are or for being a Christian in the first place. And they are boasting that they will do this to you, they will do, do that. Go and sleep. Don't bother about them. It's not you they are threatening now. It's the God you are serving that you know that they are threatening. So he is the one that will answer them. So you go and sleep. <laughs> Don't bother answering them. Just hand them over to God. You will be in your house. You will be in your office. Or you will be driving in the road when you hear news about them. If he's a boss, he might have been sacked. If he's a, a landlord, something might have happened. <laughs> he might even come apologizing to you. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done that to you. I'm sorry. You will be there when they come apologizing. And if they even refuse to apologize, God allows them to carry out their threat. It is probably for your own good because God wants to promote you to the next level. Maybe he has been telling you, hey, you have stayed too long on that position. You have stayed too long in that house. You have stayed too long in that relationship. You have stayed too long in this association. It's time to move forward. God might be using them. That's another angle to it to move you to your next level. I was living in a place several years ago. Several years ago. And the landlord was threatening me, threatening me, threatening me. And I was financially handicapped. I couldn't pay my rent. I couldn't do this. And after the trip, of course, I committed it into the hands of the Lord. God moved me to a far, 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 far better place than that house. He made provisions for me. He moved me further to a far, far better place. 
So God might be using that landlord to tell you, you have stayed too long in that house. It's high time you move to your next higher level. So you'll be using the landlord to push you. Get out, get out, get out. Move to a better place. We are already waiting for you. This place is expired. God might be using the landlord to tell you that. God might even be using your boss in your office that there's a better company that is waiting for you to come and work there. And you think you are comfortable here. And he says, I'm going to sack you. And he sacks you. <laughs> and you, you, are, you are crying. Why are you crying? Go to God and hand over the letter to him. Lord, he has sacked me. God said, don't worry. I have a better place for you. And he moves you to a better place. Maybe collecting two or three times the wages or salary you are collecting for where they are just sacked you. And you have better friends. You have better relationship in that. So, that's why the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it said, all things work together. All things. All. That's not a challenge. That uncomfortable situation. Bible says it's working out for your good. All things are working out for the good of those who underline, those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. All things work together for their good anywhere in the world. So, it takes knowing him that reveals that, ah, it's time to move forward. I need to leave this job. I need to go higher. It takes knowing him that I have to leave this job. It's high time for me to go and start my own business. That we will turn over three times the amount of the company I'm working with right now. That that company will now become un under me, become a, an envy of me, of my company. It takes knowing God for you to understand that. So, an object remains inactive. An object remains inactive, standing on the same spot until an equivalent force is applied to push it forward. Then it goes with speed and goes forward. So the landlord might be used as a nexus to push you forward to the next level. The boss might be used as a nexus to push you to the next job or to start your own business. Your neighbor might be pushing you to the next level where you might have to go and consult this and consult that with God in order to achieve your desired expectation. So, when you look at the challenges of life, at times, not all challenges are bad. Not all situations exactly are, are evil. Those challenges, most of the time, I always say, they have come to catapult you. They have come to push you to your next level. So don't be afraid of challenges when they come. Don't be afraid of trials and tribulations when they come. They, God will never allow them to pull you down because you are serving him. On the contrary, he will use it to promote you. Even if the situation, you are innocent, they just want to embarrass you. They just want to, you will see, if God decides, if God can use any system to operate with you. So he can decide to shame those who want to oppress you, those who want to shame you. He can use all kinds of situations to bring them to shame. And if there is a demon and devil that says, hey, you will not go forward, and you, are, you need to go forward, you see how God will annihilate him. <laughs> I will wipe him out of your way because he has become a stumbling block to your life. Now you now know you are very small. Your strength is small. All human beings across the globe, by God's standard, their strength is small. Put all the strength of 7.8 billion people across the globe together, their ability, their wisdom, they have put all of them together for 7.8 billion people. As far as God is concerned, they are still very small. Very, very small. How much more just you or me? So, knowing him, the topic we are speaking again and repeat it again, reveals how small you are, how frail you are, how weak you are, 
How like a worm. You know a worm. How frail a worm is. Just, you know, you can, if you just step on it, it will die. Worm. You remember in the book of Isaiah chapter 43, where God referred to Jacob. He said, you are, you are just like a worm. Oh, Jacob, warm Jacob. He said, I will help you. That's how human beings are to God. They are like worms. And you know, with challenges of life, you can, you can, you can snuff life out of any human being any time. If the, those in the opposite side of the kingdom of God, if they have their way, they can do anything to anybody anytime because we are like worms. But the worm can be strong and strengthened if he has God's backing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> can be strong and strengthened. And it, it will pass through dangerous terrains. And nothing will be able to touch that worm. And that worm is you. Do you remember this story in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1? It said, when you pass through fire, he said, don't worry, I'll help you. When you pass through fire, I will be with thee. He said, when you pass through the storms of life, it shall not overflow you. Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 3, please read it. It will not overflow you because he will help you. Because he's your backer, because he's your source, because he's your sustainer. In the book of Psalm 23, verse 1, he said, The Lord God Almighty is my shepherd. I shall not want, miss, I will not need, I will not need any other security. He will be my security. I will not lack food. He will provide food for me. I will not lack good jobs. He will give me good jobs. I will not like, lack... Uh, 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 my my sleep. I will not. I will not. I will not have sleepless night because he will give me sleep in the night. I will not lack peace of mind because he will give me peace of mind that passes all understanding. That is the one. That is your source and your strength. When you look at, uh, I remember. Somebody made a statement to me about, uh, about over three decades ago. I was in the, over almost, almost four decades ago, almost, about four decades ago. He made a statement. The guy is dead now. He said, you don't have money. You don't have power. You don't have voodoo. And you are going in for political power to go and run for a position or the other. He said they will kill you. <laughs> when you get to the restaurant, you begin to, to sweat with blood. That was the statement the guy made to me, quoting him that time. The reason is this, the powers that be, if you are not in alignment with them, and you want to join them and compete with them, I'm sure you know what will happen. That's exactly what the guy said. He said they will kill you. Now, the opposite is this. If you are not in alignment with the higher power that is higher than them, which is God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Those ones that they will kill you because you are not in alignment with them, you are not in this and that, you want to compete with them. When you are in alignment with God, who is the overall head of them all? What will happen to them? They will be absolutely powerless incapacitated against you. God. I hope you are getting my point. So, where is any human being's boasting? In the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, it said, I can do all things. I, you, every human being across the globe can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. You remove Christ from the, and his strength from you. You are nothing. You want to be, be, be depend on voodoo or juju or, or cultic power. You are nothing. Maybe they will help you 2-3%. 
<laughs> maybe, maybe. Hallelujah. You know why I'm laughing? I'm laughing because somebody made a statement to me very many years ago. He said a small boy or a small child does not know voodoo, does not know juju when he sees vegetables that have been concocted up together to be eaten for power. He just think, ah, it's just a nice food for him to eat. He said, the boy doesn't know the juju or the vegetable he's looking at is voodoo power. And he's, he's going to eat it without no, the knowledge of what he's eating. Then he might be entering into dangerous territories. That's what he was saying. Knowledge is power. Knowing him reveals your weakness. Knowing him will reveal the power of God to you. Knowing him will reveal the power of the adversary also to you. You have knowledge of the two sides. Jesus Christ said, he said, how can a man go to war without first counting the cost of going to war? Ah, well, this is what it will cost me. I'm going to need this equipment. I'm going to need these um, weapons. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that. He will first of all do his calculation before he goes to war. If he sees from his calculation that he doesn't have the necessary wherewithal or equipment, to back him up to finish the fight and win the war. He won't go into the war. He will quickly surrender and, and give up. But the one that knows his calculation, the one that has done his calculation very well, will be able to say, yeah, go ahead. Let's go to war. Hallelujah. He knows the equipment he has. That's exactly when you, are, when you know God. Knowing him reveals your weakness. Knowing him that Without him, who is your source and sustainer, the source of your strength, the source of your health, the source of your divine living, the source of your power, the source of your resources, the source of everything. Knowing him reveals that you cannot go forward with life in confidence and face the challenges of life. But knowing him tells you that, hey, no challenge that is coming. I don't give a damn. Let it come. Uh, yeah, hallelujah. I'm waiting. Let it come. Mm -hmm. And today, we can also tell you to convince him mm -hmm. by his grace. Let like any challenge that comes, <laughs> let them come. No problem. It's not me that the challenge will face. That's why we are boasting. It is the one that is behind me that is my backer that the challenge will face and it will wipe out the challenge. <laughs> so you can confidently say, Hallelujah, let the challenges come. We will overcome them. You also must be confident enough to say, let the challenges come. Even the ones I'm facing right now, I am going to overcome them because it's my source and my sustainer. It's my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. If it's you alone, let me tell you straight away, you can, you can, you can call the, the, the battle a don't deal in favor of the enemy. If it's you alone, if it's me alone, the enemy has won the battle. If it's just me. But, but because it's not me alone, and I'm joined with him. Me and him are one. Then the challenge is already defeated before it even came. The battle is already won before the battle started. The victory has already been given me before the challenges came. Hallelujah. That's the way it works. You must acknowledge your frailness. You must acknowledge your weakness. You must acknowledge your inability. Exchange your weakness for his strength. Exchange your inability for his ability. Exchange your incapacitation for his capacity. Exchange it. Hand over your own to him. Collect his own. Then you can be sure your life will be sweet. You can be sure you will finish life well. Whether you are a poor man, 
you know you finish life well. Whether you are the richest man in the world, you know you finish life well. Because he enables you to come. See, that's why I said, come, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come unto. He said, come, 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 come. Like in my local language, come means, ewa, ewa, come, 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 come. But most people will not go to him because they don't know him. The only people they know are their friends, their this, their that, their that, their, 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 the powers of his human physical powers and some other extraneous dark powers. That's all they know. But meanwhile, God is always calling them, come, 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 come. I'm available. I can support you. I can shield you. I can defend you. I can protect you. I can make provisions for you. I can, I can, I can restore you. Unending. He has no end. That's why the Bible refers to him as the beginning and the end. There's no end to what he can do for you. And there's no beginning from where he started from, from you. Because you cannot even recall his beginning anyway. Your, your, your problem, you think, ah, the challenges just started yesterday. That's what you think. He's not thinking like that. He has already known you before you were put in your mother's womb. He said, I knew you before you got into your mother's womb. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1. Before I formed thee in your mother's womb, he said, I had known you. He was telling prophet Jeremiah like that. So he has known you from the very beginning that you are not even aware of. Hallelujah. <laughs> So he just think, ah, it's a challenge. God take he had known you. He had known that challenge will come before you even come on the planet Earth. He had already seen it in advance, hundreds of years in advance. What you don't know about your grandchildren, your great great grandchildren, that will come if Jesus dies in the next two, three hundred years. God has already seen it. The one that has seen two hundred, three hundred, one thousand years in advance. The one that saw 2,000, 3,000 years before you. Ah, Abba. Who do you want to know him? Who do you want to know him? We're talking about this topic we are speaking in the morning. Knowing him reveals your weakness. And you can now exchange your weaknesses for his strength. You can now exchange your inability for his ability. I'm repeating it again. You cannot exchange your incapacity to his capacity. You cannot exchange your sickness to his divine health. You cannot exchange your stupidity, foolishness for his wisdom. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you now have wisdom to, sort, to solve naughty, naughty challenges of life at ease, you collect your foolishness, your ignorance, your stupidity. You give it, you give, hand it over to him. Let him give you his own wisdom. So when challenges of life come to you, you just address him with his own wisdom through his word. And the solution comes. And joy follows you and envelopes you. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul said, let me read it for you. Then I back it up to his here. The main verse I want to read for you. Let me read the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 9. Look at what Apostle, Apostle Paul said. So you need to, most people in this world today don't know God. I can tell you. If they know him, their wayward life, they will, quickly, they will quickly back off from it and begin to walk in righteousness. It is not the lack of knowing him that is making so many people go into all kinds of sinful lives, wayward life immorality, iniquity because they don't know him and they don't know the consequences of what they are doing. Somebody that is sleeping with somebody else's husband, the neighbor's wife, the, this, the colleague in the office, just sleeping, they don't know him. If they knew him, they would quickly zip up their trousers or close up their ties because they know the danger of the evil of such immoral, immoral acts or immoral life. Because they don't know him. The murderer, the terrorist, the evil people, the kidnappers, they don't know him. If they know him, they won't do it. The rapist, the evil man in the office, the evil this in the neighborhood, they don't know him. Those aren't even far. 
Some even in the Christian world, the body of Christ, they just go to church, they come back for ritualism, for just ritual acts every Sunday. They don't know him. If they know him, some of the things they do between Sunday, Monday, and Saturday, before they return back to Sunday again, they won't do it. So it takes knowing God for you to be able to move forward seamlessly, effortlessly, struggle-free with life and become a victor on the planet Earth. It takes, look at Apostle Paul said, look at what he said there in verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Apostle Paul, he said that, I, maybe let me back it up to nine so that you can get the full picture. And, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. See, people, a lot of people think of their own righteousness. Ah, I'm, I'm a straight guy. I don't drink alcohol. I don't womanize. I don't sleep with other people's husbands. I don't steal. I don't, they think of their righteousness. But Bible says that your righteousness is like a filthy rag, as far as God is concerned. But true Christ who strengthens you, who shed his blood on the cross, of God looks at your righteousness and it is acceptable to him. So he said, my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God is by faith. So knowing him is by faith. Understanding him is by faith. Trusting in him is by faith. Hoping in him is by faith. Everything is done by faith. A lot of people don't know. We exercise faith every day. But the enemy will want to think that it is only in God you exercise faith. You exercise faith even when you're entering the bus, you are taken to your place of work every day. How are you sure the driver is not drunk? How are you sure the driver is sane? But you enter, you don't bother about it. By faith, knowing that he will drop you at the next bus stop where you are going. So faith, faith is to be exercised not only on a daily basis with which we practice knowingly or knowingly, but with God's activities in relationship with him and with our destiny. Faith must be exercised. Verse 10 now says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conform conformable unto the death, unto his death, that I may know him. Is that time that statement begins to resonate in your heart? That I may know him. I need to know him. I need to know more of him. I need to understand his ways. I need to understand his thoughts. I need to understand what he's thinking, what he's thinking about me. I need to understand what he has for me for tomorrow. I need to, I know, I need, and you need to know. Knowledge is power. In the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, he said, My people perish for lack of knowledge. Ignorance is a killer. Uh, I don't know that I didn't know that God doesn't like it. I don't know that it's a sin. You say it's, it's ignorance. It kills. It can make God to be angry with the sinner. So you don't know. You know, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. I'm sure even in the physical, in your country, you go and say uh, you fight somebody and uh, you hit the person by killing. Ah, I didn't know he was going to die. So, you know, people have hit somebody with just one blow. And the person lies down, falls down, and dies instantly. If you tell the court that, because they would have apprehended you, tell the law enforcement, I didn't know that the blow will hit him and he will kill him. They, 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 they won't take that as, as, a, as a right for you to be freed. They said, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't have done it. You shouldn't have hit him. You should have stayed back your hand. You should have held your hand anger. You should have held your rage. You should not have done it. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So ignorance of the law with God too is not an excuse. You must know. That's why it says in the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, which has already, I just read to you, it said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people, they perish for lack of... So for you not to perish for lack of knowledge, that's why I always encourage you, please download the software of the Bible into your device so you know the mind of God concerning everything about everything in your life. Eh, I know eh, about 80% of it, but the 10%, I don't know. That 10% is the one the enemy uses as, as a nexus, as, a, as an excuse to bring you down. 
He knows that you don't know some certain things about God, about his law, about this. Ah, you shouldn't sleep with uh, anybody anyhow. Once you are married, even once you are not married, don't sleep anyhow. Don't start bringing out your whatever and be putting it in all holes. And don't let all kinds of uh, dig be entering into it. You say, I don't know. I was just enjoying myself. The enemy will capitalize on it. And he hold it against you in captivity. He will hold it against you to chastise you. He will hold it against you to accuse you. He will hold it against you to punish you. So you must not be ignorant. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Look at what God said in the verse 7. He said, because you have the rejected knowledge. That's what God said. God said, because they have rejected the knowledge about me, about my word, about my mind, about my thoughts, I will also reject them. So you need to spend time to know this God. 99% 99, 99 of people, only very few people know God across the globe. Some are even jettisoning it. They don't even give a damn anymore. They don't even want to know him. And they will be wallowing in disaster from one challenge to the other. It's a small, small challenges that shouldn't control their lives, take their life over. Small, small challenges. Little naughty problems that come their way, they will quickly, they are thrown in disarray. They are confused. They don't know what step to take. Little headache that comes, they quickly run to uh, the medical personnel and say, ah, this is happening. I always tell you, if you know God, before any other step you take, before you give any other any information to anybody, before you ask anybody at all, if you know God, you also you for consult him first. He will be your first point of call for consultation. If you know him. If you don't know him, you start calling your friends. Hey, this is what is happening to me. I don't know what to do. You call your medical personnel. This is what is happening to me. I don't know what to do. I'm not saying the medical personnel are not doing. They are doing great jobs. No doubt about it. But before you even talk to the medical personnel, before you talk to that law enforcement agency, before you talk to that your friend, before you talk to your husband, before you talk to your wife, talk to God first. It's a confirmation that you are acknowledging. You love him. You respect him. When you talk to him first. And what does he do in return? When you love him, when you respect him, when you honor him, he will reciprocate. He will order your steps. Oh, don't call this person. No, 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 no. I don't want you to call this person. This is the person I want you to call. Don't go to this place. I don't want you to go there. This is the place I want you to go. And you follow through with his instruction. Because you have acknowledged him. You have counted him first. He will order you. That's why the Bible says, the steps of the righteous... The steps of the righteous. Who are the righteous? The ones that belong to him. The ones that obey his commandment. He said they are ordered by the Lord. He will not order your step into where you look for solution, where they can kill you. He will not order your step to where you are looking for joy, where they will give you sadness. He will not order your steps to where you are looking for healing, where they would add more to your sickness. He will never do that. If you consult him first, say, Lord, this is what is going on, Lord. What's your take? What steps should I take? What move should I take? You consult him, he'll be excited. He say, okay, my son, this is what, like, like I told you several years ago, they wanted to do an operation on me. I said, Lord, I don't want any operation. After the medical person had told me you're going to be operated, I said, no, Lord, I don't want to be operated. I don't want to do any surgical operation. He didn't answer me until three days. The third day he said, don't worry, my son, you will not be operated on. Hallelujah. That was several years ago. That thing that they wanted to do operation on me, God healed me divinely. Over several years ago. And I'm in even a better health now today than I was before. Hallelujah. Because I consulted him first. Before you make that landmark decision, consult him first. If you are consulting a fellow man first, you are consulting a, a, somebody that is on the same level with you. Both of you are weak. Both of you are worms. So worm consulting worm. Weak is consulting weak. 
Frail is consulting frail. So, how is the solution going to come? We are on the same level. But consult a higher level, which is him. And he's the one that will order your step. Take this step. Go out. Don't go out. Sit at home. Read the Bible. Read this word. Follow the instruction. Obey it. Go and meet so so and so. And solution will begin to come. Hallelujah. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things. Oh! Not 99%. 100% of all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, without him, you are nothing. To let you know how frail men are. To let you know how frail men are. Any man who doesn't have access to breathe air for 10 minutes will die. He's not, he doesn't have access. He's not able to breathe for 10 minutes. He will die. No matter how wealthy he is, no matter how powerful he is, no matter how connected he is, no matter how uh, whatever he might be, his influence, G remove his air for 10 minutes or less. That's how frail men are, human beings are. Yet they won't consult the one that gave them the air. <laughs> Yet they won't want to know mm -hmm. the one that makes the air available. Yet they'll be posting about their power. We can do this, we can do that. We are the one in power. Put all of them that are boasting together. Put them in a place for where there's no air. Don't even need to do it. Just put them in a place where they would die. So where is their power? Where is that human being's power that is boasting of? Hallelujah. Kai, I pray you understand. The message is very simple. Very, very simple. Get to know him. Acknowledge his power. Acknowledge his strength. Acknowledge his ability that is higher than yours. Now, exchange your weakness, your inability for his own ability, for his own strength, for his own wisdom, for his own knowledge, and use it, and your life will be great. Your life will be sweet. Your dreams will see the light of day. The purpose that he has given you to fulfill will be fulfilled. Your destiny will prosper. Take this away this this afternoon. It's already 12.36. I have a few minutes left. Because I said I want to read the book of Hosea for you. Remember this for life. Anyone that is boasting about his power, about his ability, anywhere in the world, they don't know God. They are either in association with some dark powers, <laughs> which are even less than <laughs> your own power, not to talk of God's power. But anyone that goes acknowledging God as the one, his source, his sustainer, his strength, his ability, <laughs> knows God. That's why he's acknowledging him. Hallelujah. If you are going to be able to identify two women, one of them is your wife. Even in darkness, one of them is your wife. Just two women. And the whole place is in big darkness. The three of you are in, in, in the same place. They say, okay, identify the one that is your wife. Either by holding hand or by speaking, by the voice. One of them says, good afternoon. The other one says, good afternoon. The one that is your wife, you will recognize the voice. I'm sure you know. And if it's your child, the one that is your child, you will recognize the voice. And you say, ah, this is my wife. This one is not my wife. That's how you'll be able to recognize the voice of God, the presence of God. His power, his ability. You, you must recognize it. If you don't recognize it, then you don't know him. Mm -hmm. I was in a, an, a in a in a congregation in a church one day. 
and uh, we just started this new church several years ago, over 20 years ago. We just moved to this other church. And uh, from the auditorium where we were sitting, my wife heard the voice of our last girl, daughter, and, and said, ah. immediately she heard the cry of that girl. The girl was about two mm-hmm. years at that time. She heard the noise and the cry. She just stood up immediately. She said, that's my daughter. I'm going up to find out what happened. That's exactly how you should know God. That's the voice of God. He's speaking to me. He said, I should not take revenge. He said, I should not take that job. He said, I should not join that association. He said, I should not take mm-hmm. that trip. He said, I should go on that trip. He said, I should. He said, you should also be able to know him. Apostle Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may know him. I'm asking you this afternoon. It's 12 39 p.m. GMT. Do you know him? And I told you, billions of, not just millions. How many billions we have today? Almost 8 billion. Billions of people don't know God. They can't recognize his voice. They cannot recognize his ways. They cannot recognize his acts. They cannot recognize his moves. They don't know because they don't know. And most of them don't even give a damn about knowing him. Meanwhile, sooner than later, whether they like it or not, they are going to have to give a damn. Hallelujah. Let me quickly read this to you because my time is up, almost up, as I begin to close. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you for knowing God. Once again, please don't forget to subscribe to my live show on this, uh, what do you call it, uh, on my link there is there for you to subscribe. Look at what it says here. The verse, Hosea uh, chapter 10, verse 5. Look at look at what it says here. Verse 12. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. It is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rain righteousness of his glory, of his honor over your life. But how can you seek a God you don't know? You know, this in the book of Revelation, in the book where John, uh, Apostle John, who wrote the Revelation, he, he was addressing some people that wrote in their place, they said, to an unknown God. You can't worship a God you don't know. You cannot serve a God you don't know. So you cannot seek a God you don't know. You need to know him before you seek him. Otherwise, if you don't know him, you might be seeking demons. You might be seeking devils. And the devils, they love it. They love to impersonate him. They love to make you think it is him while it's not him. And you are worshipping the demon instead of worshipping the, the true God. Because the Bible says those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. It takes knowing him for you to worship him in spirit and in truth. Verse 13. He has, you have plowed wickedness. Ye, ye, ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. Because thou didst trust in thy way. The one that is trusting, like I said to you, trusting his way does not know him. If he knows him, he won't trust him. He will know that he's a wicked human being. He's a, like a worm. He's powerless. He has no ability. But he's trusting him. He's trusting his inability. Instead of trusting in the one that has all the ability. In the multitude of in the multitude of thy mighty men, they are trusting in horses on chariots, they are yamamens, they are military power, they are trusting in that. Because they don't know him. I've said it before. I'm saying it again. In the Middle East today, if all the warring parties know God, today, that war will come to an end today. All the fighting, all the killing in the Middle East or anywhere in the world where there is evil, there is fighting, there is shedding of blood, anywhere in the world, if all the parties get to know God today, the blood shedding will stop instantly. Verse 14. Verse uh, 14. It says, Therefore shall a man tum- a, 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 shall a tumult arise among the people, and all thy fortresses shall be spoiled. Did you hear that? 
what they are depending on will be spoiled. <laughs> As Shaman spoiled but uh, Bell <laughs> in the day of battle, the mother of Dash Bell. Yes, upon the children. Did you hear that? Upon the children. So, depending on what you have to sustain you, to protect you, to shield you, we only end up being a disappointment. Because on the day of battle, you discover that they are nothing. They cannot defend you. The last verse I want to read there. So shall bet Siba and of, of, of you, uh, of you, because of your great wickedness, in a morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. Those who have cut themselves off from God, Bible says, God says he also will cut them off. So, in order for you to have an attachment that will endure the test of time, the challenges, the situations, all the shenanigans of those in the kingdom of darkness. In order for that attachment and that relationship of you, of, of you and God to stand, it takes a deep knowledge, deep, wide, and strong knowledge of God for it to be sustained. Because easily they can tell you lies about God and you believe it, and you walk away from God. And they love it. Those in the kingdom of that, they love, they are always peddling one form of lie or the other. But your knowledge will tell you, no, they are telling lies about this God. I don't believe it. It's a lie. I will stay with God. It takes knowledge. Hallelujah. Anyway, let me stop there. I've, I've overstretched my bounds. I've gone over an hour. I shouldn't be. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Acknowledge your weakness in him. Exchange it for his strength. And your life will be sweet. If you are not a member of the kingdom of the Most High God, you cannot benefit from his strength, from his ability, from his capacity. He won't give it to you. So you need to belong to his kingdom for it to be available for you to enjoy. So just quickly say after me. I want to belong to this kingdom of God where he will give me his ability and exchange it for my weakness. Just quickly say after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I promise to serve you all the days of my life. I renounce all associations with other extraneous gods. I will no longer serve them. Only you will I serve from henceforth. Be my Lord and Savior. Order my step into my high places and I will be obedient to you forever. I detach myself from all other associations prior to this moment. Be my Lord and Savior. Order my step into my places and I will serve you forever. If you have said that, congratulations. Welcome into the kingdom of the Most High God where you are not permitted to lose a battle. Where you are a winner always because he will fight your battles for you. We don't fight any more battles because we don't have any strength. We don't have any ability. But we have taken his own strength. We have taken his own ability and he fights our battles for you. Us. And we are, we are, we can assure you that we will finish well. You also will finish well because of His presence in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we find the Bible believing church around you and begin to go. Download the software of the Bible, like I said to you. You need that knowledge into your device, tab, laptop, phone, whatever, and begin to read. And the more you read, the more knowledge you have, the more of His grace you will enjoy. If there is no Bible-believing church around you, no problem. Start a small fellowship in your house. Make your house this place of abode. Invite one or two or three like my friends anywhere you are in the world and begin to share the word of God together. Praise God together. Worship God together. Get his knowledge together. And let him abide with you in that place too. And bless you. And he will do that. Thank you so much. Good afternoon once again, my brethren. It's 1248. Thank you. I honor you. I respect you. I love you. And thank you for honoring God by showing up this afternoon. I won't be back again until Monday by His grace. Please find time to subscribe to my live show and support me. God bless you and you also will never lack support. Have a glorious and wonderful, peaceful, fruitful weekend. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Bye. Thank you.